Sorry guys, I don't think it's working. I'm trying to use the power of my subconscious mind. Hello YouTube, Robert from Texas here. And the book I am with today is... <clears throat> that sounded kind of weird, huh? The book I am with today is... The Power of the Subconscious Mind. Oh, the Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right off the bat, this book was really weird for me. Just this physical book because... Um, I had no title on the spine, which I thought was odd, and the spacing of the letters inside the book were too close to each other, and that puts me off. Because it gives me like feeling that this book was written through the internet, and it was like self-published at the library or something like that. That's kind of what it felt like. So I looked, I looked at the, uh, the date the book was written, and it said 2007. And I think, okay, it's a, it's a modern book. But then as I'm reading the book, and I got through it all, I go, this book was not written in 2007. I've been hoodwinked or something like that, because... It's written in an old style, and you get the feeling there was even mention of a president in here. And I go, wait, he's not the president today, or in 2007. Um, <clears throat> this book was actually written in 1963, and Joseph Murphy wrote a whole bunch of books. Uh, and this one I came across by watching another YouTube video, I believe. And it's, a, it's, it's, to be honest, this book, this was a little bit out there. That's the way it felt for me at first. There was a little bit too much of that, you know, I don't know, we want to, like that hippie, new age kind of stuff. And not that I'm opposed to it, I thought process or anything like that, but just it was a little bit too much of that for me. <clears throat> and that's how the book starts. And then right in the middle of the book, it gets a little better for me. And then at the end, it gets, it, it, it feels comfortable. It doesn't feel like that weird. So it's a good book, but I want to show you the, the chapters. I always like doing that because it kind of gives you an idea of what the book is all about. And I won't read all the chapters, but uh, chapter one, <clears throat> the treasure house within you. How do you, <laughs> how your own mind works. The mind's not working very well today. And the miracle working power of your subconscious, mental healings, ancient times, mental healings in modern times, practical techniques and mental heal healings. These were the chapters that kind of just kind of threw me off. The tendency of the subconscious is life word. How to get the results you want. How to use the power of your subconscious for wealth. Your right to be rich, your subconscious mind as a partner's success. Scientists use ether subconscious mind. Typo. See, it? It's in, uh, it's in, whatever. The subconscious and the wonders of sleep. Your subconscious mind and marital problems. Your subconscious mind and your happiness. Your subconscious mind and harmonious human relationships. How to use your subconscious mind for forgiveness. How your subconscious removes mental blocks. How your subconscious mind is used to remove fear and how to stay young in spirit forever. So there, that's, those are all the chapters. I guess I did read them all, my apologies. And the first part of the book, practically the first half of the book was really a little bit too much of that, hey, you want to heal yourself, just think about it, you know? And it's not, it's not, I'm, I'm putting it simple time, like senses like that. that. That's not really what it's saying, but for any aspect in your life, your subconscious is going to be key. Your subconscious picks up from whatever it is that you're thinking about, whatever it is that your thought process is. You have a goal in mind. You have a certain way that you want your life to be. You think about it, not just wish about it. You know, you don't wish for things. You think about things. You think about it. You're earnest and your desire is strong. Your subconscious is going to pick up on this and it's going to provide for you the answers that you need, that you are looking for. It's going to make you see things. And you have to be ready for that. that that's another topic entirely too but the parts of the book that I had a problem with were the, near the beginning chapters was because it talked about diseases and it had some examples in here people getting healed just simply by the, the power of the subconscious mind they were adamant about wanting to heal themselves so they had this thought process going on and it dealt with their subconscious and the body healed itself and I can't remember specifics of, of, the, of which the diseases were cured and stuff. But I hate to think about someone having an actual real life debilitating disease and people thinking that that's all they have to do is just think about getting healthy and that they will get healthy. That's crushing, I think. And that's not to say that thinking that you will get healthy or that you will have a, a better outcome or that you'll have a comfortable recovery or any of that, I think that's great to think about things like that and have that positive mindset and have your subconscious work for you so that you do have a positive outcome or a more convenient or convenient, that doesn't sound right, more 
uncomfortable situation. I, I really can't deal with the specifics right now, but I just hate to think that someone's going to think about something to make themselves feel better, or to get better, and it doesn't happen. And that's kind of it, that's what the, that's kind of the gist I got. And that book kind of felt it was just too out there, just too hey, you got cancer, just think about getting better. That's kind of what it felt like, and that's not fair to the book because that's not really what it's saying. But that's just that's the mode that I felt, right? And it just didn't feel comfortable. So I had to put the book down for a little while. Just let me go read something else, which is not norm, which is not abnormal for me. I read like three or four books at a time. And not a, I'm not a voracious reader. It's just I'll stop sometimes and I'll read another book. And that's what I did with this one because it didn't keep my attention. It kind of threw me off a little bit. And, and then it got a little bit better when it was talking about chapters about money and how to think yourself to riches. And again, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing where it's like, hey, you've got this weird thought process and you want to make money. And, and it's not just sit there and wishing and thinking about money. It's you, you, you've got to have your subconscious working for you, with you, by you thinking about it, and your subconscious is going to show you the answers. I'm thinking about an example. It mentions, it talks about sleep in this book, too. And I remember this one teacher, a uh, big pardon, this one uh, student, a college student, he was like up burning the midnight oil trying to solve a physics problem, and he was working at it, working at it, he couldn't do it, he was having a hard time, and he just says, you know, yeah, I got to go to sleep. So he went to sleep, woke up the next morning, got right back to his desk, started working on the same problem, and he solved it right then and there. So that was his subconscious mind working. His, you know, his, his brain was telling him, he was talking to himself, saying, hey, I got to figure this out, I got to figure this out, I got to figure this problem out. He's doing, he's working at it, and he can't do it. Goes to sleep, because he's got to get some sleep. His subconscious mind is still working, and it's solving the problem for him. So when he goes back into it the next day, wide awake and fresh and all that, he solves it because his subconscious mind has been working on it the entire night. Your brain doesn't stop while you're sleeping. Heart still pumps, lungs still expand, cells do whatever it is that cells do, and your mind is still going. I think that's what dreams are all about, right? I've never read any book on dreams, but I'm sure that's what the whole process of dreams are. Your brain is still working, trying to solve things. So when it comes into like, talks about chapters about money and stuff, it's the same thing. It's just put yourself in the right attitude by thinking of things the way you want them to be and be earnest and truthful with yourself that that's what you want and how you want it and live your day with that thought process all the time, thinking about what it is, how it is that you want. And I don't think it makes sense of the book about being specific about it, it almost kind of generalizes saying, hey, just think about wealth. Just say yourself wealth, wealth throughout the day, many times a day. Uh, and also right before you go to sleep, have your subconscious work on you developing a wealthy lifestyle. And it's not by magic that all of a sudden you're going to get tons of money into your bank account or anything like that. It's what's going to happen. What I believe will happen is that your subconscious mind will show you things and get you the riches that you want. Opportunities will present themselves and... And if you hadn't been thinking about this as a money-making process, your subconscious mind will probably say, hey, 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 I'm pointing it out to you. And you'll pick up on it because maybe you never noticed it before, but you were thinking about it, and your subconscious mind is trying to <laughs> show things to you, and you'll, you'll see it, you'll see it. And, and again, it, and it's not just sit there and wishing and thinking, I'm gonna, it's gonna, I want the money and it's going to happen. You have to have that proper mindset, that proper thought process. And that's what the subconscious mind is all about, is having it work for you by you thinking about it as two separate parts of your brain. Does that make any kind of sense, you guys? You know, having that thought process of thinking that's what you want, having your subconscious mind pick up on it, and your subconscious will show you what's around you to get you what you need. And it's not going to happen overnight because it's a real lifestyle change almost, if you will. You know, anything that you want to become, you think about. And whatever it is that you think about, you become. You think you have a crappy life? You think you have bad things happen to you all the time? There you go. No wonder. Because that's what you keep thinking about. And this book, you know, it shows you. It shows you ways how to get that subconscious working for you. And how powerful it can be. It talks about relationships and how it is that you should or how it is that you want to find a mate, how to 
be in a happy family, you know, by, by, by first thinking about it, being honest and truthful with yourself, have your subconscious work for you, and then that will, that will come to fruition as long as you work at it. It's not, it's not like a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not like, a, hey, it's going to happen like my magic. You have to put work into it. And that's the whole thing about thinking versus wishing, I believe. It's, when you're thinking about something, it's you're actually working at something. Because you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. And your subconscious mind is working for you. To, hey, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you that. You know, another thing about the book, too, is that a lot of the chapters also have a verbal, uh, verbal, <laughs> has Bible verses in them. I think it mentions, I think in each chapter, at least one Bible verse. So if you're, if you're put off by that, you know, I don't know what your religious beliefs are or not, that, that just, you know, heads up, it's going to show you Bible verses, each, practically every chapter. And also at the end of each chapter is what happens in a lot of books that I like. It kind of has bullet points to what the chapter was about. So that's always cool to reference. I like that a lot because, like, even though I still highlight and I still tag stamp stuff, I like to go back and just look at the end of the chapter and look at the bullet points and say, oh yeah, yeah, that's what the chapter's all about. So I enjoy that part a lot. And the book, it's written again in that old style, kind of like weird. I don't know how to explain it when I say old style, but just it's not a modern book. And the first parts of the book were just a little bit too much out there for me. Even though that's not to say I don't believe in that stuff. It's just a little bit too much the way it's presented. The chapters in the middle are, are, were my favorite, the ones about money. And talks and at the end uh, talks about relationships and how to get along with other people. Those are also cool. But it starts off a little bit, a little bit too much out there for me. It's kind of weird. I don't know why. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't. Why would I? Why would I think anything differently? But it's just. It's. It's. It's just. It didn't. It didn't gel with me too well. But overall, I think it's a good book. And I, I was misguided because I thought it would be thin. And I thought, oh yeah, it's going to quick read. But the typeset is just so close by. And again, it's just this particular book that it maybe oh, it's a lot longer than it really should be or what it is. Does that make any sense at all? I don't know, guys. All right, you guys, this is uh, the book I was with today, Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. And I hope you guys have a good day, and I will chat with you later. Bye. I have the power. I have the power. I, I really don't think that's what it means. I, don't, I, really, don't, I really don't think that's what the power. No, 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 no. <laughs> that can't be right. I got to read the book and find out. I didn't read the book. I'm just kidding, guys.